Evening everyone, I'm Bill Watkin from SSAT. I'm not going to talk to you about current practice, I'm going to talk to you about things that are coming your way, I think. I'm going to talk about the assessment reforms, the proposals to change Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 in the context of significant challenges facing schools at the moment. I'm not going to deal with all of those now because we haven't got time, but I am going to talk about the EB, the IB, the TB and the AB, which are all coming our way. And I'm going to talk about one particular element of those at the moment, and that's the terminal exam. The notion that the best way to assess a child's learning, in fact the only way to assess a child's learning, is to wait for a couple of years, make them do masses of revision, stick them in a hall and make them do a long written paper, and then send the paper off to someone who's never met that child, who will be able to identify the level of progress made, the level of attainment reached, and the future potential of that child for further study. The other thing that I think we need to be conscious of when talking about the assessment framework is the raising the participation age. So it's going to go up to 17 in 2013, 18 in 2015. And I hope you've all done your modelling. You've worked out how many extra students you're anticipating in your sixth form, whether you've got enough toilets to accommodate them and catering facilities to feed them, whether you can afford the teachers and the classrooms to accommodate them and teach them. So we're talking about reforms to the proposals. I don't think any of us would argue about the need to have reformed and more rigorous qualifications. You have unfortunately been colluding with the exam boards in this race to the bottom, we understand from the Secretary of State, and that means that you have been choosing specifications that are the easiest ones to pass, and the exam boards, which are commercial organisations looking to sell a product, have been creating easy-to-pass specifications, and that has created this devaluing of GCSEs in a race to the bottom. So the way to address that is to have one subject, one board. So if you're going to do English, you get it from Edexcel. If you're going to do maths, you get it from AQA, and so on. And that's going on right now. The exam boards are busy writing their specifications for the EBCs, and they must have their bids in by June 2013. So that's only seven months away. The two criteria for awarding the contracts to the boards, one, they must have five years' successful delivery of exams. Not many exam boards could lay claim to that at the moment. <laughs> and the second criterion is that the, bid will be the successful bid will be the most ambitious one. So what does an ambitious bid mean? It probably means difficult, so we no longer have a race to the bottom. We have a race to the top. So you've got these EBCs, which are subject-level qualifications, with the EB, which is the overarching cluster qualification. Unless you're not up to doing the EBCs, in which case you do a statement of achievement. And a statement of achievement is a school-level piece of work that is drawn up by the school, identifying the level of attainment reached by each child in each subject. Let's just hope that it's not presented in a burgundy-coloured folder. The students who do not pass their EBCs at 16 can go on to do them at 17 or 18, which means that you've got to make decisions about what you're going to offer in your sixth form. You're going to have to do English and maths resits because you don't get the funding for the children unless you do unless the children are entered for it, you're also going to have to consider doing resets in all the other English back subjects because your school may be judged by how many kids you get through the English back. And if you're going to do all these resets in history and geography and French and so on, how many A-levels are the children going to be able to study alongside these resets? And just to make things more interesting, we've got to make absolutely sure that we restrict teacher assessment because you can't trust teachers to get it right, of course. So in subjects that matter, no teacher assessment. In subjects that don't matter, it may be that you can have some teacher assessment. Have you noticed that this emerging hierarchy of subjects? Some subjects matter considerably more than others. So English and maths really matter. Science matters a little bit less than English and maths, but a lot more than all the others. History and geography matter slightly less than science and rather more or less than English and maths but a lot more than all the other subjects that don't matter but in the subjects that don't matter there are some that matter slightly more than the others <laughs> so engineering matters more than all the other subjects that don't matter but it doesn't matter as much as the subjects that really matter <laughs> and of course what we've got to make sure is that we remove opportunities to teach the test so what we don't want is having passed papers examiners reports 
mark schemes, it's really important that we don't understand how testing works. <laughs> and finally, in the 21st century, we've got to make absolutely sure that children don't use calculators in maths exams, periodic tables in science, set texts in English or source materials in history. But what the English back will do, and I think we would all agree it should do, is identify the literacy and numeracy levels of the children, their understanding of the subject, or does that mean the content of the subject, and the readiness to move on to further study. So it is definitely going to happen. This is not a proposal. 2015, English, Maths and Science will come in. First assessment, 2017. So what are you going to do if you've got a three-year key stage four, two-year key stage three, and sometimes some of your students do their GCSEs currently in year 10? What are you going to do in 2016 for those children? Are you going to enter them early, or are you going to make them do a three-year key stage four and do EBCs rather than these worthless bits of paper called GCSEs? They've got to be aligned to the best international standards, whatever that means. We are obviously unfavorably compared with Finland, who think we're completely bonkers because having an almost uniquely white, monocultural, middle-class society, they wonder what it is that we could learn from them. We're also compared unfavorably with Singapore that are busy unpicking a lot of what they've done for the last 10 years because it hasn't worked. And it's got to be an almost universal qualification, which 90% of our school population will be eligible for. And we certainly don't want tiering, because tiering represents a ceiling on attainment and is demotivating if you're entered for the foundation paper. So we want a single paper that will be suitable for children of all abilities from the most able to the least able. Key stage five, the A back introduced. Uh, I won't say a huge amount about that, except you need to know that it's contrasting subjects if you're going to get the A back. You can't do English, Maths, Physics and Chemistry. You've got to do English, Maths, Physics and Drama. <laughs> Veterinary colleges will be looking forward to that. Huge implications for pedagogy, for data, and so on and so on. And I've got to stop now. Thank you very much. No.